We've lost many highly experienced helicopter pilots over the years doing work that pushes the envelope of skill, equipment and the human factor right to the edge. One man who's no stranger to this world of extraordinary helicopter application is Dion Rousseau from Chopper Works. Uh, I'm fascinated by uh, technology and how it's moving forward, particularly with uh, things such, such as unmanned flight. But just to get us there, um, give us a sense of some of the work that you do with Chopper Works, because I know that uh, many times you're called in to do some pretty dangerous things, and, and I just wonder what kind of solutions do you provide? Yeah, um, the company specializes in power line work, and that's a whole supply chain of power lines. Mm. From initial route selection to building new lines uh, to maintaining existing lines uh, and the ultimate is to maintain existing lines without switching the power off. Uh, you want to avoid disrupting power supply to the client. Mm -hmm. So that calls for, for a lot of uh, uh, specialized training, discipline, uh, awareness from the pilot and not all pilots that do this kind of work are necessarily very highly skilled probably above average skills, but it's, it's, the, it's discipline, um, it's focus, th th those are the sort of things that makes a good power line pilot. The mentality um, is, is really key to this, a, a non-risk taker. Yeah. Um, because we fly the aircraft on these power lines at, the, at normally at the close to the limit of the aircraft design, so you have to be aware of the environment and the, the you know, winds and uh, where the people are, because you're required to put people on, on the apparatus, on the power line, uh, who then becomes energized with the power line. Um, a small error will certainly lead to the death of the individual. A small error on, on the flying skill of the pilot could lead him striking the wires as well. Mm -hmm. um, in the event of an accident, or let me call it, not an accident, a, uh, a critical failure of one of the main components, or you have to have the skill then to get it out of that tight spot. We take a skill of a pilot and we increase the skill level to be able to do fly with precision. All right, so uh, we're starting to see more and more unmanned flight. And I wonder, in the helicopter space, is that something that's starting to come into being? Yes, very much so. Um, a, a company by the name of Cayman in, in North America has a product called the K-Max. The K-Max was designed in the 80s to be a pure cargo lifter, uh, lifting loads up to almost three tons. Now, after they closed their line, uh, the production line, the, the, um, I think it was the US Marine Corps, uh, ordered two K-Max helicopters to be built to be flown unmanned for uh, hostile uh, operations in Afghanistan. And they also use it extensively on, on, on ships, moving cargo from, from the one ship to the next, all unmanned, highly successful operation. The K-Max is, a, is an, it's a unique helicopter, one engine, very powerful, yeah. no hydraulics, no tail rotor, it's designed in a V-shape, allowing the pilot to be able to look down vertically without twisting himself into a cook sister like mm -hmm. position to be able to see the load be below him. So uh, we see the so-called drone operation crossing over into helicopter operations, but it's unmanned. It's still a pilot, but the pilot's not in the, in the right. cockpit. So what might you be able to mitigate using uh, unmanned flights that uh, uh, if you had a pilot sitting in the actual plane might have difficulty with? I think uh, one of the uh, reasons for a lot of accidents are loss of situational awareness, uh, which could be caused by many things. I think this could be avoided mm. in, in a way. Um, with the development of artificial intelligence now, one will be able to program the helicopter to be or the unmanned helicopter to be so, so far ahead of, of what's happening around it, it will be able to react in time as fast as the pilot can do. The pilot makes a decision. Okay? In this case, the pilot's on the ground. He's still making a decision. This is not uh, uh, unmanned, but it's uncontrolled. Right. But the control is on the ground. Yet, I believe that uh, computer systems are able to fly the helicopter with far more accuracy and precision mm -hmm. 
than any pilot can do. Yeah. So, so, I suppose some pilots will disagree with me, but that's, that's a reality because not all pilots have the same skills. We're not born equal. Right. And I suppose things like fighting fires at night could be... Yes. Yeah. All of a sudden now you have an operation that can be run 24-7 um, because of all the sensors that are built into the helicopter. Um, you're not relying on the, the pilot sensors. You're relying on computer sensors that uh, can see at night. Mm. It can maintain a, a, a vertical and horizontal clearances. To give an idea now... Um, the latest software has been developed in North America, which is detect and avoid. So if the helicopter can fly autonomously, detect uh, a threat, like a conflicting flight or an obstacle, and avoid it, where a pilot can't do yeah. it.